Hey guys, Ivan here, and I have a couple of things to talk about today. So first of all, let's talk about the Luke Sandel. I watched finally this video they filmed uh, of Milo Šačev, Serbian bodybuilding legend, actually fixing a little minor details in uh, Luke Sandel's posing. And I must say, Luke looks amazing. There is a tremendous potential of him actually becoming the Mr. Olympia in the near future, as a matter of fact. Because this guy is very complete, he doesn't lack anything. And the thickness of his muscles is another level. This is something like Dorian Yates' thickness, but actually a little bit bigger. If he can just get as sharp as Dorian Yates, he can probably be a better bodybuilder than Dorian. He doesn't have some super impressive freaking looking body parts, but he has everything. And you cannot deny his back. His back is just, look at this, look at the chunk of meat there. Milos is impressed by the thickness, obviously. I mean, he's just packed. Packed so much muscle on his body. Now, there isn't really much that I can critique on Luke's physique. He is looking pretty much perfect already, but there is one big thing, actually. It seems minor, but it's actually a huge thing, and that's his stomach. So basically, today, everybody has a little bit of bubble gut, <laughs> right? But what you actually need to do is not to trim it, because if you are a 300-pound bodybuilder, you're going to have a little bit of stomach. You cannot look like a... 12 year old girl in that area and like a hulk in the rest of your body, you know, your body grows, everything grows, so waist grows a little. It's about controlling that stomach on the stage. That is what Luke needs to work on the most, to improve the control of his stomach. That's what Rolly did back in 2015, I believe, and he improved his placing so much. He placed third in the world back when we had actually Phil Heath and Sean Roden in the game. Right now, those guys are out and Rolly has the chance to win the throne. So basically, Luke has everything, and he is one of my favorite bodybuilders, he has an amazing personality as well, he is that hardcore British bodybuilder, and I love Brits. He also reminds me of Dorian Yates, he lifts super heavy, that's something I am impressed with. He is big as a house, he has a great wheat taper also, he can actually pull a vacuum, but the only thing that I don't really like about his physique is his stomach, and I get it, if you are this big, you cannot really have a tiny little waist, but you can just try harder to control it. And also, is that a hernia on his stomach? I think he has that as well. But I guess that's not really fixable at this point. Maybe a surgery, but that's not really a smart choice. It's not that big of an issue. If he can just control the stomach, make it look smaller, he would be pretty much perfect. With those arms, with that back, with so much muscle, with great chest, great legs, every single freaking thing. He just needs to come dialed in and win. Win the Mr. Olympia, that's right. And no, I'm not saying he's gonna do it this year, he needs to improve a little bit, it's gonna take a couple of years, but he has all the potential in the world to do so very soon. This year it's probably gonna be Brandon Curry, but Brandon doesn't have legs like Luke, so I'm sure if Luke brings a little bit better muscle maturity combined with insane conditioning, which probably needs time because Luke is very young, and if Chris Asito managed to do it with Jay Cutler, with Sean Roden to get him peeled to the bone in 2018 Mr. Olympia, I'm pretty sure he can do it with Luke this year or in a couple of years. So if you, yeah, you, I'm talking to you, if you are a huge fan of Luke Sandor, just like myself, don't consider this hating on him, it's nothing like that, I'm just criticizing on his physique, because this is my job, this is what my channel is about, criticizing bodybuilders. I'm not gonna sit here and say everything the best about all of them, that wouldn't really make much sense, right? So once again, I'm a huge fan of Luke, and I think he can improve just by learning how to control his stomach. And here you can see what happens, what happens when Milos Sharchev tells him to control it a little bit better, to suck it in. So let me actually show you. Now, okay, even that, try to glue your stomach to the spine. Yeah. Wow, wow, did you see that? Huge difference, huge difference. He looks much better when his stomach is sucked in. And not only that he looks much better, but that's what the judges are looking for today. They gave the win to Sean Roden, and it was admitted by the head judge of IBB, Steve Weinberger. He said that Phil lost because of his stomach. It hurt him in so many poses. And the same thing can happen to Luke if he doesn't pay attention to it before it's too late. Before it's too late. The same thing happened to Phil Hit. He didn't care about it, and eventually it blew up too much. And that was the reason why he didn't win eight Sandos in a row. That train is gone. Maybe he will win the 8th one, maybe he will even win 10 or even more maybe. But 8 in a row, 
Not gonna happen. Now the next video that I'm gonna play for you is a little bit funny. It's a Luke imitating Phil Heath. So let's uh, let's see this. <laughs> okay, front double, rear double, Phil Heath. Yeah. <laughs> front double. You know what? what yeah, that's a front double Phil Heath. <laughs> but yeah, he was joking, sure. But I would never be able to push my stomach this much to make it look this big. I'm sure most of you guys wouldn't be able to. If you wanna do this, you need to have a really big belly. You need to have a bubble gut, right? And Luke does have it. Luke's got it. And now, all he can do is actually learn how to control it. So, for example, if you take a look at this quarter turn, that's one of his most impressive poses or transitions. He looks freaking crazy here. He looks freaking amazing. His arm is huge, his chest is bulgy, it's separated, his abs also look great, legs are big, shoulders are there. You can even see his back a little, but look at the stomach. Look at the stomach when he relaxes. This is not allowed on the stage, not today. Maybe it was in Ronnie Coleman's era, maybe Ronnie was able to get away with it, with all that mass combined with that crazy conditioning, but I don't think we'll, they will let Luke get away with it. No way, no way. He needs to control it. He needs to learn how to control it perfectly. And once he's able to do that, that's when we can consider him winning the Mr. Olympia. Because that's what Mr. Olympia is all about today. Abs and thighs is the back double bicep of today. And that's about it about Luke, guys. So basically all I'm saying is Luke needs to control this stomach in order to become perfect bodybuilder and win the Mr. Olympia one day or in a couple of years. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is this photo right here of William Bonek and Rolly Winkler. And no, I did not want to make a separate video about this because it doesn't really mean anything. So basically, as you can see, this is two of them, probably second and third spot at this year's 2019 Mr. Olympia. These guys are looking blown up, jacked like crazy. Rolly's triceps are freaking enormous. William's biceps looking even crazier since they're actually pushing his chest. I'm sure he can't even let his arms hang down normally. And I do think this is some kind of sight enhancement oil because I know that all of these bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders, are using them to a certain extent. I'm sure Phil Heath is not using them because his arms are already way more dominant than his shoulders and chest and they would look his body even less impressive if they were actually even a little bit bigger. So he doesn't even train them directly, very rarely, maybe like he hits biceps after back and triceps after chest. Of course, he does not have a separate arm day, but I do think that William does use oil at least a little bit because these arms are looking just too suspicious, not human-like. Anyways, as you can see on the right side, Phil Heath commented, see ya soon. So naturally, everybody is assuming that he is referring to Mr. Olympia, that he is gonna compete against these guys, but I don't think that's the case, because Phil Heath right now, he is on his tour with the Global Muscle Radio, he is just traveling around the globe, he is meeting fans, he's shaking hands, kissing babies, he is showing no attention to compete this year. If he wanted to compete, he would already have to start his prep. He's probably just setting up the terrain for the next year. And next year, he's gonna just come back and uh, kill it. You know, win the Mr. Olympia, most likely. Right now, he's looking jacked. He's looking huge. But he's just probably taking it easy, you know, eating a lot, training hard, relaxing and trying to grow to improve for 2020. As you can see, based on this story right here, he is traveling to Dubai now, and we are like seven weeks out of Mr. Olympia, so when would he start his prep? Like five weeks out? Uh, I don't think he would do that. I don't think he would do like half-ass prep. I'm pretty sure that if he decides to come back to compete, he will give it all of his, and he doesn't want to be second ever again. I'm sure he hated that too much to risk it again. And as you can see right here, he is looking freaking jacked, like crazy. I mean, this is just super impressive. I don't know about his legs, but they don't really seem smaller. Everything seems perfect. I mean, like on spot. So by the time 220 comes, I'm sure he will plan everything out perfectly. And with Henry Rambut, one of the best coaches in the world, in his corner, I'm sure he will regain his sandal back. Another thing also, he said that the Mr. Olympia... 2019, whoever wins it will uh, not be considered real Mr. Olympia because there is a lot of bodybuilders, great bodybuilders out of that competition. So he probably refers to himself as well. He's not going to compete. He wouldn't say that if he was competing, right? But this Mr. Olympia in classic physique, though, two times champ, Brion Ainsley is definitely doing this show. And as you can see, based on this photo right here, he's looking on spot. 
he's looking perfect and I'm sure he will be super dry, super conditioned. He is known for having pretty much no weaknesses. He knows how to show the best sides of his physique. He is experienced. He's an older guy actually. He looks 25 but he's like 40, almost 40. He's like 39 or 40 right now, which is surprising, I know. And uh, he will have to try harder this year against uh, Chris Bumstead. I know he's very complete and uh, Chris does have a couple of flaws. But when you look at this physique and when you look at Chris's physique, you must find Chris's physique more impressive. And here is another proof that uh, Chris is probably going to win it. I say proof because last year Chris only lost by one single point. Only one point. And you guys must know what Chris has went through last year. He had those crazy kidney issues and that's why he was off. He was off. He was looking great, but it was off for him. And uh, this year he's gonna come perfect if everything goes well with his health and I think he will win the Mr. Olympia. And I'm saying that for a long time and you're gonna see when it happens. Mark my words. But these guys are babies compared to open class guys and not these guys but us because I'm striving to become class physique guy and uh, there's a long way ahead of me so these guys are actually much bigger than me but they are nothing compared to the open guys. I mean look at this. Look at this. Freaking insane. Look at Brando's arm compared to Brion's waist. <laughs> like crazy. I mean, this is just wow, wow. This really proves us that classic physique is nothing compared to the open. It's an awesome division. I love it. It's perfect for me because I don't have the genetics to become a freak like Brandon here. But, you know, <laughs> I am just super amazed by Brandon because this is just crazy big crazy big insane and this is what impresses me the most size mass that's what i like to see i like classic physiques in their own way sure they're also awesome but bodybuilding open class is the bread and butter of this sport and that's what i'm impressed with the most period and so here is brandon's physique update yeah posted by his coach abdullah so here you can see that brandon is looking as good as always, as good as usual. He did not really improve from 2019 Arnold Classic. He didn't really have time to do that, but he will be on point as far as conditioning and that will be good enough to win the show. His upper body is just freaking insane, but you can see that his legs are lagging behind a little bit. His legs are not as full, not as big, not as, not as separated also. So that's going to be his biggest weakness. It will be exposed by guys like uh, William Bonac and uh, Rolly Winkler and also probably Luke Sando as well and some other guys. But will that be enough to beat him? No, because he has an amazing upper body development. His torso is just too supreme. His conditioning is on point. He has a small waist. He's a great representation for bodybuilding. He's an American citizen. He can talk. He is just perfect for next Mr. Olympia. And he will win it. He will definitely win it. And I think his physique is the most impressive also. I mean, that not just the fact that he's a good representation, the good senator. He is also a very good bodybuilder, for sure. I mean, this is just... These arms, these arms and this back also of his, which you cannot see in this pose, but you must know that he has one of the best backs in, uh, in like, last 20 years or so. In, in this millennium. In this millennium. Third best back. I would say so. Do you think anybody had better back? Tell me in the comment section below. Anyways, I think Brandon Curry is winning 2019 Mr. Olympia. Even though 2019 Mr. Olympia will be deficient of the greatest bodybuilders of today, such as Phil Heath, Kai Green, Big Ramy, and so on, we will have a completely new lineup, completely new top 6 and top 10 as well. So that's refreshing. I like that. I don't know about you guys, there are many older dudes here, but as far as us younger folks, like 20 plus years in our mid 20s and so on, we never really saw anything exciting at the Mr. Olympia. Since I started following it, it's been Phil Heath every year. And there was no discussion that anybody, could else, anybody else can win it. I mean, there was also Kai Green, who was great. And it was always kind of close, but I always knew Phil Heath is winning it. Because he was just more complete. And this year is going to be exciting. And do you know who this is right here? Yeah, this is Patrick Moore. He's guest posing at 7 weeks out. It's a bold move, but he knows he's not winning the show this year, but he can actually surprise us. He can crack the top six. And that is what I love about this year's Mr. Olympia. It's like another show, like any show in the year, because we have no idea who's going to crack the top six. They're all, you know, average bodybuilders. They are not super crazy, complete, 
outstanding, the best in the history bodybuilders. None of them, really. I mean, when you had Phil Heath at his best, we always knew nobody's beating Phil. The same thing was with Ronnie. The same thing was very much with uh, Jay Cutler as well, Dorian. But right now, we don't, we don't have that. We don't have something like that. Anybody can take it. And this guy can surprise us, pretty much. He can crack a top six. Sure, he can even be fourth, third. He can even win it, actually. Yeah, because he's very complete. He has everything. And it's just pretty much about the conditioning. You guys know that, for example, Jay Cutler was 15th. Uh, which is something I heard in this video of Milo Sharchev and Luke Sando, but I knew this before. In 1999, Mr. Olympia, but in 2000 or 2001, he was second. Remind me. And the thing is, this can happen again. Because all of these guys, the top 20, they're all very close. They're not too far apart. They are pro show winners. And that makes you the, one of the best bodybuilders in the world if you win a pro show. And this guy is a pro show winner. So he can win the Mr. Olympia too. It's possible. Look at him. I mean, just look at him. He's very good. He's very good. Are these arms and shoulders simple? Who the hell knows? It does not matter. The same thing that I said about William Bonac. Maybe he's using it. I think all the pros are using it. But if you don't see it, if it doesn't look soft and oily, it's fine. It's fine. All over, his physique is looking impressive. This guy is very white. That's his strength. He's super white to the shoulders, which makes his waist look even smaller than it is. And look at this X tape right here. Very good X tape. Very, very good. This guy can win the Mr. Olympia as well, right? Why not? Tell me why not. He can do it, I'm sure. But he probably won't do it. He's not as thick as the other guys. He's not as developed. He's not as matured. It will take a few years for him, but everything is possible, right? And that's what we love about this Mr. Olympia 2019. But the case is not exactly the same in 2012. Unless Hari Chopin shows up somehow in 2012, which is not gonna happen. If Hari can compete in Mr. Olympia, he will do the Open because he can win it. In 2012, it's pretty much certain that Derek Langsford is going to win this show. And here you can see him doing some incline dumbbell presses. You can see the veins on his body. He is getting shredded. He's getting there. And I'm sure he's the next 212 Mr. Olympia champion. Now, for the end of this video, I'm gonna leave you with this. And this is the new video that Wesley Wieser's Winter Genetics published. And it's a very good short film. It's really, really professionally edited. And I encourage you to watch it because they used my commentary in it. And it looks really good. I liked it. It really made me smile. I really loved it. And I commented down below. Wesley also replied. He said that he is not mad because I was criticizing him a little bit. I know I was a little harsh, but once again, that's what I do. That's my job. I need to criticize them because they need to improve. And I said it before, I'm going to say it again. Wesley has the potential to be the next Classic Physique Mr. Olympia champion. But what he needs to improve is his conditioning. His conditioning is not good enough. Sure, there are other things that he can improve, like maybe make his shoulders and lats bigger so his waist can look smaller. Um, his lats are not super low inserted. His legs could use some work. But that is less important than his conditioning. His conditioning is the number one thing. That's what he needs to work on the most. If he can just somehow come peeled, peeled to the bone, like shredded to the shreds, <laughs> he can just come like dry, dry as hell. He can probably place in like top five, top four, top six at least at the Mr. Olympia. And that's pretty much the, the most important thing. Just Wesley, come shredded, die, die from dieting. You know, diet on egg whites and spinach. That's it. Don't do anything else. I don't know how, would body or how your body would respond to super low carb diet, maybe not as well, but you need to do something to come peeled. And I think that's it. I think that's the only thing that he needs to work on. Anyways, guys, this is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave the like down below. And also, if you want to see more content like this, I'm covering everything, every single thing that is important in bodybuilding, and I'm giving my honest, original opinion. So don't miss out on any of my future videos, and please, Click that subscribe button down below. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.